I want to bring in Dr. Gregory Burns. He's a neuroscientist who spent a decade studying the brains of dogs using groundbreaking MRI research. Welcome, Dr. Burns. Hello. Hey, there. Hi. Great to be here. You wrote a New York Times bestseller called How Dogs Love Us. Tell us how you were able to prove that our dogs love us. Well, I'm a neuroscientist, and so I view behavior and everything through the lens of the brain. And so about 11 years ago, I started a project where we trained dogs to go in MRI scanners, awake, unrestrained, and just, you know, just a thing that they did. And I, I read that. So can I stop you? Because everybody's thinking the same thing I was thinking when I first <laughs> read it. How do you get a dog to, to, to be in an MRI machine? It was originally a project. I didn't know if it could be done. In fact, everyone I told thought this was a ridiculous idea. Yeah. But I teamed up with a very good dog trainer and we basically broke down the whole process of going into an MRI for, for a dog's perspective. And I built a simulator that I kept in my basement, a uh, big tube. And just over the course of many months, I slowly acclimated my dog, Callie, to going in this tube. And then I taught her how to put her head in, like in a little chin rest and wow. we made little earplugs because of course they're very loud. And I started playing recordings of the sound an MRI makes uh, just in the background when we're playing and having fun. And just put all these steps together just very slowly and very wow. gradually. And in essence, just made a game out of it for her because she doesn't know what an MRI is. Right. So what did you find out through this process? So, of course, everyone wants to know if their dog loves them. That was what I wanted to know as well. Uh, is it just the treats? Is it some kind of bond that they have uh, beyond that? Oh, yeah, so or is did, it dependency? Is it, is it like, you know you can't get along without me, so you have to be nice to me? It could be. Yeah, it could be any of those things because they can't speak to us and tell us what they're thinking. So, so my idea was just, well, let's go look in their brains because we know essentially what their brain looks like. They have many of the same basic structures that we do. And so we focused on the reward parts of their brain and asked a very simple question. When we show a dog a treat or the prospect of a treat, we're gonna see activity there. That's, that's what Pavlov discovered 100 years ago. But then the question is, well, what about when there's no treat? What about when just person is there, when their owner is there and they just say, good girl or good boy, what does that do? And what we found was for the majority of dogs, about three quarters of the dogs, it was equal response to both of those things. The dogs valued that praise and just being around their person as much as food. And for about a quarter of them, they actually valued it more, the praise. Wow. And so what is doing all this work taught you about the significance of our dogs in our lives? Well, I, I agree with Dr. Safina that they, uh, they evolved to be with us. They are our first friends. They are the first animals who, in essence, chose to be with us. And so they are very well suited to our lifestyles. They are probably the most successful animal on this planet besides humans, because mm. there's roughly one dog for every 10 people on this planet. That's a lot of dogs, and that speaks to their success in kind of hitching their wagons to us. Yeah, what you want to say, Dad? Another huge interesting thing about that is that everywhere people have ever gone, dogs have been there with them. So we seem to have valued their presence in our lives as much as they value our presence in theirs. They seem to be these companions that we don't want to go across the ocean in outrigger canoes without dogs. We don't want to travel to Australia 60,000 years ago without dogs. I mean, it's really unbelievable. The Arctic dogs are everywhere people have gone. That's fascinating. And are, they, are, are dogs uh, capable of other complex human emotions have you discovered, like jealousy or empathy or guilt? So we have done many experiments uh, in those realms and probably I think the one that um, kind of stands out the most is we have actually studied jealousy. So we did an experiment with the dogs that were, were trained for MRI and we had their humans standing there right in front of them. 
And so we did a test where the human sometimes uh, gave their dog a treat, and then other times they turned around and put the food in a bucket behind them. And then the third condition was they gave the treat to a very realistic looking statue of a dog. So we assume that our subjects were not terribly happy when they didn't get their treat. But what was interesting is what's the difference between when that treat goes to a bucket versus another dog or something that looks like a dog. So we thought that that might evoke some jealousy. And what was interesting is that for some of the dogs, it actually evoked a response in an area of the brain called the amygdala, which is associated with arousal. It's like getting the hackles up. Um, mm -hmm. And they were clearly bothered by it, even though to outward appearances, they were doing what they were taught. They stayed in the scanner. They were just watching. But we could see something in the brain that that did bother them. But I think the important thing here is not all the dogs were like that, only some of them. And when we looked at it more closely, these were the dogs who had histories of aggressive behavior. Hey. Uh, they would fight with other dogs, especially over resources. My dog being one of them, Callie, even though she was the first one to do this, um, I say she was the first, but not the best. And now your latest book is called Cow Puppy. I love that title, Cow Puppy, about your herd of 10 miniature cows. So what do you want us to know about cows? Are they in any way like dogs? They're a lot like dogs. So four years ago, I left the city and my wife and I moved to a farm to live the Green Acres life and found myself trying to manage pastures and acquired a bull and two cows who very quickly gave birth. And that three turned into five, which then turned into 10. And I fell in love with them. I found that they are as demonstrative as the dogs that I have. If you know how to interpret their language, they're extremely social. And following on what uh, the cows Dr. are said, or the calves are, because I have a bunch of cows of and I don't think of cows as being very similar to dogs. I asked that question, but I don't think of them as being very similar at all. I have seen very similar behaviors that my cows have, uh, like the dogs. So they have play bows too, especially the calves. They, they will kind of go down and, and put their front legs down and, and put their butt up in the air when they want to play. And they even wag their tails. And uh, they're extremely affectionate with each other. And once they accept you into the herd, they treat you the same way. They lick me, they, you know, they'll lie down and just cuddle up to me. And there's no treats involved because all I do is manage the pastures. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I, I think if you, if you give almost anything a chance to show you how relational they're capable of being, you will be astonished, as I have been astonished, at... The world that we are surrounded by with all these things that we think are just scenery, oh, bird flitting by, uh, a rabbit in the bushes, that these, these creatures actually have lives. They have their own relationships. They're capable of showing you that, but we are almost never in a situation where we can see it or we're even open to seeing it. And the, the big exception is our dogs or maybe our cats in our, in our homes. And most people don't get contact with any of these other lives right. and, and any of their, their minds, their emotional systems, which have a lot more in common than they differ. Thank you, Dr. Burns. So fascinating. Thank you.